So, you may be here because you heard about this new test called the HPV test, and you want to know what it's all about. Well, I'm going to break it down for you, but just to be clear, I'm going to tell you about HPV, not HIV. I know, they sound similar. But HPV stands for Human Papillomavirus. And there's over 100 kinds of HPV, but only about a dozen or so are linked with cervical cancer, and we'll call these high-risk HPV. It's good to know if you have any high-risk HPV so you and your doctor can keep a close eye on your cervical health. Now, here's the thing. HPV is really, really common. You can get it from many kinds of intimate sexual contact. You can get it from sex or any sort of fooling around where there's skin-to-skin contact in the genital area. And condoms don't completely stop it. But you can't get it from just shaking hands or a massage because high-risk HPV really only lives in the genital area. But again, HPV is really common. It's sort of like a cold. Most people have it at some point in their life, but their body just fights it off. But unlike a cold, most people never even know they have it. Now, you may be thinking, I've been with the same person for many years. If I have HPV, does it mean my partner has been unfaithful? In a word, no. This is because HPV can hide out in a person's body for many years and maybe even decades. So having HPV does not mean anyone cheated. It's not like that. It may just mean that one of you caught it when you were younger and your body hasn't completely fought it off yet. Okay, about now I'm guessing you're wondering, should I be tested for HPV? So we'll talk about that next. Well, the easiest way to know if you need to be tested for HPV is your age. If you're under age 30, you do not need an HPV test with your pap. Why not? Well, even though it is very common to have HPV in your 20s, most likely your body will just fight it off. So knowing if you have HPV isn't all that helpful at this age. Of course, make sure you get your regular pap tests, but at this age you only need an HPV test if your pap result is unclear. Your doctor may call an unclear pap borderline or ask us. Usually it's nothing, but it's good to do an HPV test just to be sure. Now if you're 30 or older, hello. By this age, HPV is much less common. By 30, most women's immune systems have fought it off. So, if high-risk HPV is still hanging out in your body, there is a greater risk you could develop cervical cancer. The good news is that now you can get tested for high-risk HPV at the same time you get your pap test. Together, these tests give you and your doctor a very accurate picture of your risk of developing cervical cancer. But let me be clear. High-risk HPV does not mean you'll get cancer. In fact, most women who have high-risk HPV will not develop cancer. Here, let me show you. Okay, these women all have high-risk HPV, but it needs to stay in the body for a long time to cause problems. So only some will have long-term HPV, and only a few of those women will develop cell changes that could lead to cervical cancer if left untreated. But almost all women who develop cell changes have HPV. So why not just get the HPV test and skip the pap? Because together, these two tests create the most accurate screening so your doctor knows how to treat you. While the HPV test looks for the virus that can cause cervical cancer, the pap looks for cell changes to see how HPV may be affecting your cervix. Okay, you still with me? Good. So let's talk a little bit about what cervical cancer is and how the HPV test is done. First, let's take a look at the cervix and talk about what cervical cancer is, so we know what we're talking about. All right, you may have seen this before, so you probably know that this is your reproductive system, and these are your ovaries. Here's your vagina and your uterus. The lowest part of your uterus, right over here, is the cervix. It's a kind of donut-shaped opening to the uterus. In fact, it's kind of like a doorway between the vagina and the uterus. Sperm pass through this opening, and during childbirth, it opens up so the baby can be born. So, what is cervical cancer? Well, before cancer develops, some cells that line the cervix change and become abnormal. And in most cases, these abnormal cells grow slowly often over a period of 10 to 15 years. So if found early, these cell changes can be treated and eliminated, and this almost always prevents cervical cancer. But when not found early, these cell changes can turn into cervical cancer. 
The abnormal cells in the cervix grow out of control. The cancer can spread to the uterus and other areas. This makes it harder to treat, and the uterus often needs to be removed. And in some cases, this type of cancer can even lead to death. So it's really important to catch it early. But here is the problem: you can't feel cell changes. You won't have pain or itching or suddenly break out in blue spots or anything. That's why you have to get regular screenings. There's just no other way to tell what's going on down there. The HPV test looks for the virus that causes the cell changes that lead to cervical cancer, and the Pap test can let you and your doctor know if you already have any of these cell changes. So together, they give you an accurate picture of your risk of developing cervical cancer. Okay, so let's move on, and I'll tell you about how the test is done. Now, most likely, you've had a pelvic exam and a Pap test before, so you know it's not a big deal. But here's what you may not know: you have to plan for your exam. This means you can't go in for your exam during your period, and for two days before your appointment, no sex, no tampons, no douching, and P.S. No one should do this anyway, and no vaginal creams, medication, or anything in your vagina at all. Why not? Well, you want a clear and accurate sample. These things can mess up your results, and you don't want that. Also, if you're pregnant, you shouldn't get an HPV test. Now, getting tested for HPV is exactly like getting a Pap, so it's no extra work for your doctor. And many times, the lab can use the very same sample for both tests. I'll show you how it looks from the doctor's point of view. You know the drill. You're in the stirrups, and your doctor uses something that looks like this. It's called a speculum. It's used to open up the walls of the vagina. It can feel a little cold at first, but it lets her take a look in there. Once the speculum is in, she'll use a small brush and a little spatula to collect some cells from the cervix right here. It only takes a few seconds to take both samples, and this all happens while you stare at the ceiling and have a really awkward conversation about your job or the weather, and it's over. Not so bad. Some cells may be smeared onto a slide like this. And some are stored in some liquid like this. Then the samples are sent to a lab. After this, your doctor will do a pelvic exam. She'll take a look at your vagina and check for any discharge or infections. She'll also use her hands to feel your uterus, ovaries, and often your rectum to make sure they're healthy. Not pleasant or really fun, but not painful. All right, enough about that. Now, most Pap tests are read under a microscope by a lab tech, and some samples may be difficult to see clearly. Errors can happen when the tech reads the sample, or when a sample doesn't have enough cells, and that's why the HPV test is so useful. It leaves little room for human error because it tests for the cause of cervical cancer with very accurate technology. Together, these two tests give more accurate results than a Pap test alone. So again, it's more information for your peace of mind. The results usually come back in a few weeks. You may get a phone call, or you may get them in the mail. Each office is a little different. After you talk to your doctor or nurse about the results, make it your job to get a copy of your test results for your records. Now, how do you understand your test results? Well, if you have both tests, there are a few different ways it can go. A normal Pap and no HPV means you're fine. But still, see your doctor regularly and talk with her about when to return for your next appointment. Remember, this may also be a good time for you to look at your birth control options and talk about family planning with your doctor. If you have a normal Pap but have HPV, you're probably okay. But your doctor may want to keep a closer eye on things and do both tests again in six months to a year. Now, it's pretty common to have a borderline Pap result, what doctors call ASCUS. Most of the time, an ASCUS result is nothing to worry about. If you have an ASCUS Pap and no HPV, you're fine. In fact, this is one way the HPV test is really helpful. It lets your doctor know if an ASCUS Pap is anything to worry about and if further action is needed. But like always, see your doctor again in a year for your regular exam. Now, if you have an ASCUS Pap and you have HPV, your doctor will want to take a closer look at your cervix. She'll also want to take a closer look if you have an abnormal Pap. An abnormal Pap means there are some abnormal cell changes. So your doctor will look at your cervix, no matter what your HPV test shows. How will she do this? She'll do something called a colposcopy. All right, here we are again. Once you're ready, the cervix is washed with a vinegar solution. 
Cells that turn white may be abnormal. So she'll use a bright light and a high-powered microscope, which looks like binoculars on a stand, to take a look at any white areas. Now, if she sees anything, she may also take a small piece of tissue so it can be tested, and this is called a biopsy. It's really the only way to find out for sure if there are any cell changes that could lead to cancer. So knowing whether or not you have HPV does a few things. It helps you and your doctor know if you have a greater risk of developing cervical cancer. It helps your doctor know when to watch you more closely, perhaps even before there are any abnormal cell changes. And it can let your doctor know if an ascus or borderline pap is anything to worry about, so you avoid any unnecessary colposcopies or biopsies. Of course, just knowing about HPV and what these tests mean is the kind of information we all need to make good decisions. So, if the HPV test sounds right for you, don't be shy. Ask your doctor for it and go from there. And if this has helped you, tell your friends or other women in your family about this program so they can watch it too. Thanks for watching, and I wish you the best of health.